Your Humanities Half Hour is brought to you by the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Days and Tiro, welcome to Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry, and we're coming to you today from the beautiful island of Tinian in the Marianas, where we're chatting with historian and former educator Don Farrell. Don, welcome back to Your Humanities Half Hour. Thank you very much, Kathy. It's always a pleasure to be here with you. We're speaking today about your latest collaboration with the public school system, Modern History of Northern Mariana Islands. But at the moment, we're here in front of a piece of history itself, the historic bell tower here in San Jose Village, which has also recently withstood the strongest storm in Mariana's history, uh, Super Typhoon U2, a year ago. Tell us a little bit about this bell tower and what's happening with Tinian and the recovery of the church here. Uh, This church is, of course, one of the great historic properties of the island of Tinian. Uh, This church, the original church, was uh, begun in uh, early 1950s by uh, uh, Father Marcian Pallette and working in cooperation with the, the local population uh, they had happy Saturdays and happy Sundays almost every weekend as the population of Tinian gathered here on this piece of property uh, to build a church for their community. The church, of course, is named San Jose Church uh, because the uh, island was dedicated to San Jose uh, in 1948, right, at the time when the Yap Chamorro migration took place. And it happened to be on the weekend of the Feast of San Jose. So that named San Jose and that named the San Jose Church. So uh, to make a long story short, Father Marcian Paulette was a rather amazing fellow. And working with the local people, uh, he designed a church with an iron uh, roof on it and built this, this beautiful bell tower Um, with the concept in mind that this place would live forever. Unfortunately, the years took its toll on the iron roof of the old, the original church. And some years back, the parish council decided it was time to build a new church instead of replacing the roof on the old church. As a result, we have the new church that you see behind us, Kathy, uh, which was uh, devastated by Super Typhoon U2, knocked out so many windows and everything, and now the community is in the process of trying to raise the funds to rebuild their church. But the bell tower from this church that was consecrated in 1956 still stands as a monument to the people of Tinian who spent their weekends down here uh, barbecuing as we do, with what they had. This was a time before econ- economics. And so they ate fresh fish and they ate fresh vegetables here, uh, caught fish caught on Tinian and vegetables raised on Tinian to build the Tinian San Jose Church. One thing about Tinian or really any of the islands in the Marianas is any place you turn, there's a piece of history before you, um, like the bell tower. Some of this is documented in the textbooks that you've done with the public school system. A lot of it is in the brains of people like yourself who have all these interesting stories. But tell us a little bit about how the the project of this textbook got started with PSS. And um, hopefully we can also talk about the latest editions. But how did it all begin? I moved here full time. Uh, with my wife Carmen in 1987 and took a job teaching at Tinian High, math and science. My degree is actually in marine biology with a minor in advanced mathematics. Uh, But I fell in love with the oceans when I first came out here. I came to Guam in 78 and uh, 
so I, I just fell in love with the island, and, and I was enjoying teaching here. The students, the people were so nice and polite. And, but I one day asked my son what he uses for his In My History text. And he brought out a Xerox. No photographs, no maps, no references, uh, just a Xerox with that two-pronged thing at the top of it for the foldover, and it ended with World War II. Shortly after that, we were visited at the end of that school year by all of the uh, ranking officers at PSS, as they always do. And uh, at the end of the, their five-day visit here, uh, we had a meeting with them, and they turned around and said, what can you do for PSS? So after everybody had gone around the table, I turned around and I pulled out this Xerox, right, that my son was using, and I laid it out on the table in front of Justo Kitagua, who was then deputy superintendent for instruction. And I said, uh, this is my son's in a my history book, but it doesn't tell us anything about the islands after the war. Uh, and then I pulled out a copy of one of the books I had written about Guam, Liberation 1944, and I said, look, I am not a PhD, right, but I know I can give you a better history book. And Husto then took it upon himself to go back to then uh, Superintendent of Education, Henry I. Sablon, who said, he's right, we need to do this. So it was then became a project of the federal programs officer, uh, Tim Thornburg, who established this revolving fund in a, in a federal program that would allow the creation of a local history textbook. And I was hired to do that work. And that was how the first volume got started. And that was about 25 years ago? Uh, that was 1989 when we first started on the project um, with serious help from uh, Senator, Senator, former Deputy, Commission, Deputy Superintendent uh, Kitigua, uh and uh, Jackie Kitigua, of course, and several others in the, in the old front office of PSS. Uh, we were able to get the project moving along. And in 1991, we published the very first edition of History of the Northern Mariana Islands, which was distributed to all of the schools and was adopted by the Board of Education as the textbook, the official textbook for Northern Mariana's history. I had the opportunity to use this textbook when I um, taught a semester of Northern Mariana's history about four years ago. It ends with really just the beginnings of the tourism industry. And I think it was about four years ago, you came out with, I don't want to say the second part, you can describe best what is this um, second book that came out, History of the Mariana Islands to Partition. That's, that's a great question. And a lot of that is due to former Commissioner of Education, Rita Sablon. She recognized, we all recognized, that by the, the 2000s, uh, I think this was in 29 or 2010, uh, that the first edition was out of date. Right? I forgot even which administration it ended with. I think it was... I'm thinking ten, uh, Pedro Tenorio. Could have been, could have been Tenorio. Teno. And so uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Sablon called me in and said, what do you think? And I said, yeah, it's, it's time to do an update. A lot has changed. Much new information is available now that was not available then. And it should be brought all the way up to date today. And she agreed. And I said, however, as a teacher, uh, I really do believe that what you need to con uh, create first is a middle school textbook that will give the 7th and 8th graders an introduction to Mariana's history so that then the, uh, the, the later years, what we're now calling the modern history, can be dealt with more in depth at the high school age so that the students take uh, one in the middle school, 
advanced in the high school, and then they go out into the workforce. She agreed. They took it to the board, and that ended up with the creation of History of the Mariana Islands to Partition. Notice it says Mariana Islands, because we were all one up until the Spanish-American War. We were part of Guam. So uh, uh, again, with the help of PSS, we produced that book from this revolving fund that was created by the original edition. And uh, we, we produced that new volume. And we were all very pleased with it. And it, we, I lowered the, uh, the reading level to make it match junior high school standards. And then it became time to do the follow-up to create modern history of the Northern Marianas. So I went to work on that. Uh, we did decide that we should summarize the history of the Mariana Islands to petition into what would become the first unit of modern history so that modern history could stand alone for those people who did not get a, a chance to see history of the Marianas to partition. And then the book follows the rest of the history of the Marianas all the way up to and including the inauguration of Governor uh, Torres. I was very pleased that we got that done. Now, if, uh, if all goes well, our students will go out into the workforce knowing exactly how modern uh, Northern Marianas came about. When we come back, let's talk a little bit more about this latest uh, publication, The Modern History of the Northern Mariana Islands, after this break. Did you know that you can donate up to $5,000 to the Humanities Council through the CNMI Education Tax Credit Program? Donations from individuals and corporations qualify and can be used to offset your local wage and salary tax, BGRT, and earnings tax. Call our office at 235-4785 to see how you can support humanities programs in our community and obtain a tax credit for your donation. Sizu Usma'asi, Olomai, and thank you. Welcome back to Your Humanities Half Hour. Our guest today is Don Farrell, uh, author of the latest publication, Modern History of the Northern Mariana Islands. Don, you kind of started uh, mentioning a little bit about how the new publication is different from the first publication in that started in 1989. Just looking at it myself, I noticed like you provide more resources uh, for people who want to read further on the topics. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of the updates you've made. When I was given the contract to create Modern History of the Northern Marianas, I, I knew it was going to be uh, a, a major research project. I had gotten my introduction to that by having to, to create a history of the Marianas to partition. So much has research, primary research, has been done on the Mariana Islands since 1991 that I essentially had to start from scratch by reading all of the new publications and incorporating them into the old chapters, updating the old chapters. So if you were to read the first chapters of, of the 91 edition and then you read the first chapter of uh, the 2017 edition, they're quite different. Right? And some of the teachers have asked me about that. And I said, well, the book is updated. And I think I've improved my writing skills a little bit. <laughs> so I hope some of the language is better. Trying to keep it at a ninth grade reading level is always difficult. But anyway, we, we then ventured into the history of people that are still living, which, frankly, is a rather dangerous thing to do. Right? But... I got very good support from so many people that had served in all the past administrations who were willing to sit down and talk to me about their governor and, and the things that they tried to achieve during their administration. So uh, is uh, the politics of history or the history of politics, depending on how you want to look at it, uh, is very important to where we are today. How did we get to where we are today? And that was the objective of chapter 16, the last chapter of the book, the Marianas, the Northern Marianas today. And it all goes all the way up to the inauguration of Governor Torres. 
And in fact, even to the recent situation we've had with North Korea and their weapons development and also uh, Chinese expansion into the Pacific. So it really is a modern history, very much so. Um, In your research, are there any particular topics that stand out to you as ones that you gave more time and space to, or there was any like significant new information that is included? Well, I would have to say it's the last three chapters, right, which are, are brand new to the book. There, were, there was nothing that dealt with the developments that have occurred uh, since the Tenno administration. And much has happened. Much has changed with our territorial federal relationship. Much has changed with the military development on the island. Uh, There was uh, so much new information that had to be considered. And the most difficult part of that in writing a high school history textbook is presenting it in a way to where a high school sophomore or junior can read it and understand it and begin to analyze where they fit into this whole story. And, and, and then, in the end, the purpose of history is, of course, not to repeat the mistakes of the past. So the objective of the last chapter is to get the students thinking about what is going to be the next chapter in Northern Mariana's history. You're emotional about that. Why does this particular topic touch your heart? If you study the history of the Pacific, and particularly the history of the Mariana Islands, one of our critical issues is our strategic location. You know, we've learned in the recent history about North Korea considering using a weapon against Guam, perhaps. And we all know what happened when foreign affairs, foreign relations, military relations uh, went south during World War II, and then we were affected by the Korean War, and we were affected by the war in Vietnam, right? Uh, Were we, were something to happen in Washington, D.C. that was to spark another war that affected the Pacific, what would happen to our islands? And I think that's something that everybody needs to think about. So those graduating seniors, I I hope by the time they leave uh, high school and enter the workforce, go to college, gain an education, learn more about America, more about the world, more about the Marianas, uh, they'll keep in mind that uh, we enjoy a very peaceful life today, as you can see. But uh, there's always the possibility, which we must keep in mind, of not another super typhoon U2, but a super typhoon war, which is even more devastating. I would have to say that in reading the first textbook and preparing for the class that I taught, I also noted how we seem to have repeated, history has repeated itself in in our islands and continues to repeat itself, sometimes in good ways, uh, sometimes in bad ways. I think it's really a tool, as you said, for people to learn more about our history and also reflect on where we're headed. Absolutely. Uh, We, because of our strategic location, not just militarily, but also commercially, we're on the Trans-Pacific shipping routes for oil and supplies. Everything comes to us from the outside world. If anything happens to upset that chain of command, those lines of communication, Uh, we suffer, right? There's an old saying that if Japan sneezes, the Marianas catches cold. And and that's true today, whether it's uh, something that happens with Japan, but particularly uh, North Korea, China's uh, interest in in expanding their participation in Pacific history, as the Japanese did before World War II. And I'm hoping that by reading and studying this textbook and discussing it with their classmates and their teacher in a classroom environment, they'll come to appreciate why they need to be prepared for the typhoon of foreign affairs that could strike us at any time. 
in your passion to help young people become aware of of these circumstances and our history and how it all ties together, you're actually working on a new project to better equip uh, teachers of Northern Mariana's history. What is this project about? Oh, yes, I'm very excited about this. You know, I, Kathy, I, I began this project back in 1989 with when I first started to work on the first edition and then the Marianas to Partition and then the Modern History. I always wanted to finish this up to make sure that the teachers in the classroom had the tools that they needed to do the best they can in the classroom. So we are now experimenting with the idea of creating what we've called, or calling, the uh, teacher's companion to Mariana's history. It's not a teacher's edition because we're not going to reprint the book. There are about 500 students that take Mariana's history every year. There are eight full-time NMI history teachers. So we are considering creating uh, the Marianas, Northern Marianas History Teachers Association, who will work with Claudia Palacios, the uh, program manager for the social studies department at the public school system, uh, to create uh, this teacher's companion that will have uh, will create lesson plans, activities, classroom video, YouTube videos, all the list of the tools that they need to be successful in the classroom from day to day. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I hope it does happen because it would be uh, the culmination of something that I've been working on for 30 years. Now, is this going to be exclusively contributed to by current teachers or can other professionals or former teachers also participate in this, um, as you said, companion to the history book? Well, I'm hoping that the latter is going to be true. Right? We have to, there, there's a process we have to go through. It's got to be approved by the Commissioner of Education. There's got to be funding available. Right? It's got to be probably a um, accepted by the Board of Education because there would be some funds that need to be expended, right? But uh, the bottom line is, I'm hoping that just as I was able to do with Volume 1, Volume 2, and Volume 3, that we'll be able to call on all kinds of outside resources to develop activities. We need field trips, the, the Saipan Museum, the... Uh, uh, the, the, the American Memorial Park. Uh, there's so many things that our kids need to see because touching history, even if it's visual, being there where it happened and thinking about what happened that day back then uh, is, is so important this, for the students to be able to truly empathize, to gain the feeling of history. Uh, so I'm very excited about this project. I'm uh, certainly hoping it'll go through, and I'm hoping that not only all of our teachers, but as you suggested, Kathy, the many, many valuable uh, resources we have here in the islands to be able to help us add to this uh, teacher's companion to NMI history. In the modern history of the NMI, you mentioned how it is your hope that the next history book would be written by somebody of Northern Mariana's descent. And this is actually, uh, this is also something you expressed last time we sat down and chatted. And I will every time the subject comes up and I have a chance to say it, right? I, I'm very disappointed that we are not producing college students graduating in, in history who will be able to take over the roles. Teaching NMI history in the high schools of the Northern Marianas, to me, has got to be a dream job. I've had it before. You're talking to the kids who live the history, right? And they can go home and talk to their parents. Is that true, Dad? You know, did this really happen? Uh, that, that is so uh, very important. So I, I see this as an opportunity for us to commit to create a communications link between the elders and the youth as we collaborate on how we go about teaching NMI history and, and mechanisms to help the students better understand it. I have uh, constantly harped on the idea of getting local people into the study 
and the writing of NMI history. Although I have very much enjoyed the job of researching and, and writing and working with very professional artists and, and editors on, on creating this book, it would be so much better, I think, and more, I'm not sure, heartfelt perhaps by the students and the people if the name on the cover was an indigenous name. And I say this particularly about the Carolinian community. I have asked repeatedly to work with a, a group of Carolinians at writing the Carolinian history of Saipan. Not that I want to write it myself, right? Because I don't think that's appropriate. What I'm, what I'm saying is I was hoping that some Carolinian, person of Carolinian descent, right, would accept the responsibility of, of collecting and writing their own history. I'd be glad to help out with the technical side of it. But it, that history, so much of it is essentially protected by their culture, right? That it's not spoken of as American history is. So I, I do once again put out the plea for somebody to take the bull by the horns and write a Carolinian history of Saipan. That way in the future, look, uh, I, I may, this may be my last book, right? As far as the, the history of the Northern Marianas is concerned. Who's going to write the next one? Somebody fresh off the boat? Right? And if this, these things aren't properly recorded, like the Carolinian history, I at least have the ability to go talk to the people. But if it's done 10 years from now, how many of the elders are going to be left to tell the truth? Well, we want to thank you for your time today and for welcoming us to your home here in Tinian. Any final thoughts before we go? Yes, I'm very pleased with what has happened. I'm very thankful to the, to the CNMI Board of Education, their leadership, the legislature, and everybody, the, the various governors, right, who, who helped out and, and their staff over the years. And um, it's just been a, a, a wonderful experience for me. I was able to find copies of all three of these books at the Joten Kizu Public Library. For others that might be interested, where can they find a copy? I'm not sure. I think the original edition is sold out, although there may still be some copies around. But I know that American Memorial Park Gift Center bestseller books uh, does carry these on hand. And I think you can find some of them at the uh, Saipan Museum. Thanks so much, Don. Thank you. Our guest today has been author, historian, and former educator Don Farrell. We'd love to hear your thoughts on today's show. You can comment on the Northern Marianas Humanities Council Facebook page, or if you would like to hear this show again or other editions of Your Humanities Half Hour, please check out the Council's YouTube page. This has been Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry. This program was supported by a We the People grant awarded to the Northern Marianas Humanities Council from the National Endowment for the Humanities. Any views, findings, conclusions, or recommendations expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily represent those of the National Endowment for the Humanities or the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Mm -hmm.